Okay, so moving on to part two of the amplifier build, uh, and the first uh, thing that we're going to do is pull together this uh, supply circuitry here. So this consists of three hundred nanofarad caps, and then this nine volt regulator, and then this VCC TX base goes to the um, uh, the collectors of the first and st second stages, as well as to the uh, the bias circuitry for the uh, at the gate of the IRF five thirties. So just quickly uh, showing where those components go on the board. So here's, uh, this is actually the top of the board. Um, the 9 volt regulator goes on top of the board uh, right here. And then these are the spots that, so this is where the 2SC1971 and the two MOSFETs go and they go underneath the board. The idea is that this part goes on top of your, uh, of your heat sink. Um, and then we have those, the space for the three uh, 100 nanofarad caps, they're all SMD components and they go here, here and here. So what I'll do is I'll uh, get on with installing them and uh, then we'll come back and uh, check to make sure that the uh, that we're actually getting 9 volts out of the uh, regulator. Just a quick note on the uh, SMD components in the kit. Um, these actually aren't marked in any way, but the shorter strip consists of 100 nanofarad caps and then the bottom strip is the uh, 10 nanofarad caps. And so these are the 104, the, the caps marked 104 on the schematic. These are the caps marked 103. So obviously I've, I've taken two out here and they are identical. These are 0805 caps. So there's no way of telling them apart once you get them out of the, out of the packaging. So keep them in, in the packaging till you need them. Uh, the fi finally, on the resistors, there's, there's kind of two varieties of resistors there. There's uh, this style where it's uh, 3301, uh, and that is 330 times 10 to the 1, or 3.3K. Uh, there is others in there like 5R1 and uh, I think 56R0. You just replace the R with a decimal point. So if you see 5R1, that's 5.1 ohms. But anyway, uh, keep these guys separate. Uh, until you, uh, or rather, keep them in their uh, in their packaging until you need them. Um, I ha actually have an LCR meter with a pair of tweezers, so I can't actually tell these apart. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so just once again, these are the 104s. These are the 103s. Okay, so I've installed all this here, as well as these uh, few caps up here. So there's a pair of 100 nanofarad, and then there's this electrolytic here. So let's have a look at that on the board and uh, test we're getting uh, 9 volts. Okay, so here's the uh, 9 volt regulator, here's the electrolytic I mentioned, and then on the other side of the board there's these five, um, that's a bit out of focus off to the right there, but there's these 500 nanofarad caps. And one other thing to remember is there's a, uh, a jumper here that you have to create a solder bridge across, so that's J9. So let's uh, test for 9 volts and uh, let's make sure that's working. Okay, so sorry the focus isn't great here, but uh, it goes uh, in, ground, and out on the 9 volt regulator. So let's just probe that. And you can see there are 8.93 volts. Uh, now that's unloaded, so, uh, you know, obviously there's, there's nothing else in the circuit there. So, uh, so this is all hooked up correctly. We'll move on to the next step. Okay, the next section is going to be the gate bias voltage. So that consists of this uh, pair of pots in the middle here. These two inductors, which keep RF off the off the power supply, and then uh, these this diode configuration here, which uh, the consensus is that uh, this is actual thermal stabilization on the on the gate voltage. So, thanks for the uh, contributions of those uh, viewers from the last video. Uh, so I'll get that uh, installed, and we'll move on. Before we move on, uh, just a quick zoom in. This these are the diodes that are included in the kit. And it goes anode, cathode, and you can see the stripe right here. So there's a stripe here, and then there's the uh, that's the configuration of this diode. Anyway, let me get those installed, and I'll come right back. Okay, so that's the uh, bias gate bias circuitry installed. So there's those two pots there, and uh, we have the inductors sitting above them. I've gone out of focus here. Sorry about that. And then on the reverse side of the board. Here we have that uh, that diode with the capacitor bypass. Now, interestingly, it's got it's D5 and D6 on here, on, and on the schematic, it's D3 and D4. So, 
little bit of a mistake on the board there. And note also the orientation of the diode, the black stripe on the diode is towards ground. Uh, but that was all fairly straightforward. So what I'll do now is just uh, uh, test that the, uh, uh, the, the everything works in terms of setting the bias and uh, we'll come back. Okay, so I'm probing at uh, those inductors there and on the top pot, all the way all the way clockwise is lowest uh, lowest gate bias voltage. The bottom pot it's the reverse, so all the way counterclockwise. So just to make things a little more interesting. So let me just uh, adjust that, and you can see the voltage down the bottom there is increasing, all the way up to nine volts, which is uh, which is the supply voltage coming out of that regulator. Similarly on the bottom pot, we start at zero. And then this time it's all the way clockwise is uh, maximum gate bias voltage. So what I'll, what I'll do is I'll just set them back to zero volts and that'll be a safe position to start the tests later on. So in the last bit of this video, I'll be building up the first stage here uh, and that consists of, so there's an input, I'll use a BNC uh, jack rather than the, the supplied SMA. Uh, there's a pi attenuator here, and then there's the first stage itself where we've got the, resist the, uh, the resistor divider bias network here, and we have T1, which is the 4 to 1 turns um, on the smallest binocular core. So what I'll do is I'll build up all this, and then uh, I'll come back, we'll wind, the, we'll wind T1, and then as I mentioned, I'm going to have a uh, 1 ohm or a 1.5 ohm uh, resistor on this side and we'll run some tests and uh, we'll see what we'll see Okay, so here we are on the uh, top of the first stage here. So there's that uh, There's that transistor. I haven't put in uh, T1 yet. So I'll do that shortly, but uh, I'll just pause on the uh, Kind of the values here. So these are both the 103s uh, all, all three of these actually are 103 capacitors. So 10 nanofarad capacitors uh, note that this is uh, 200 is not 200 ohms, it's 20 ohms, so that's 20 times 10 to the 0. So that's a note there. Same here with these guys. This isn't 3,000 uh, ohms, this is 300 ohms. Uh, and then the only other thing is on the back. Let me just spin this around. We have uh, these two uh, components here, so that's uh, another cap. And then, then 201 is actually 200 ohms, so 20 times 10 to the 1. So that's the first stage complete. Um, what I'll do now is I'll uh, in, uh, wind and install T1, and then we'll uh, come back and do some testing. So just a quick note, uh, this is the binocular core that's, uh, uh, that forms T1. And uh, the way you wind binocular cores is each time both wires pass through the center, that's a single turn. So what you're looking at right there is that's one turn. Uh, so, so anyway, um, what I'll do is I'll wind this. It's four turns on the primary, one turn on the secondary. Uh, I'll have long legs on the, uh, the four turns, so I'll remember which is which when I put it in the circuit. Anyway, I'll come back when I've got that wound and installed. Okay, so here's uh, T1 is installed here. So this is the primary side with four turns here and here. And this is the secondary side with a single turn. Uh, so you want to check continuity between here, this point here and ground. And you also want to check continuity between here and here. So continuity here and here, continuity from here to ground. And there should be no continuity between this side and this side at all. All right, so I'll move on to installing that uh, uh, that resistor on the output of T1, and then we'll come back and test. Okay, so I'm ready to uh, do some tests here. Uh, I actually didn't have any one ohm resistors, so I've uh, I've got two three ohm resistors in parallel. So that'll be uh, about 1.5 ohms on the output side of the uh, transformer T1. I'm going to be injecting a 14 megahertz signal on the input side here. And uh, I actually don't have the pi attenuator in my LT spy circuit, so uh, I'm uh, basically using a, a 60 millivolt peak to peak signal. That's what I'm using in, in the simulator. And then I'm going to be probing at both the collector of this transistor here, uh, and I'm also going to be probing at the output of T1. 
and we'll have a look at those results and compare them to uh, the results I had in LT Spice. Okay, so let's first have a look at the, um, uh, the, this is the voltage at the base of that transistor. And you can see, as I said, it's around about a 60 millivolt peak to peak signal. Now that's offset a bit. You can see the minimum and the max there is, so it's around about one volts. So that's uh, from that resistor divider there, the 3.3K 510 ohm resistor divider. Um, so as you can see, 60 millivolts peak to peak uh, on the input at the base of the uh, transistor. Let's move now to the collector of the transistor and see what that, look, what that signal looks like. Okay, so here's the uh, results probing at the uh, collector of that uh, first uh, transistor, the first stage transistor. And as you can see there, uh, it's 1.14 uh, volts peak to peak. Uh, and the uh, max and min are 9.04 volts to 7.8-ish volts. Now, on in LT Spice, I had... The uh, simulated results were between 9.1 and 7.4 volts. So, in uh, uh, in this circuit here, we've got a 1.2 volt roughly peak to peak signal. In LT Spice, it was 1.7 volts. Um, so, a bit of difference there, but uh, we're actually getting an output here. So, what I'll do now is probe at the output of T1 and see what that looks like. Okay, so here's the output of T1. And uh, you can see that's a roughly peak-to-peak -peak signal of around about 200 millivolts. Uh, the simulated results I got on LT Spice was 240 millivolts. Uh, again, both in peak-to-peak -peak there. So uh, both results are, are sort of uh, off, but in the ballpark, I guess you could say, from LT Spice. Um, so what I'll do now is uh, I guess I've confirmed the first stage is working. Uh, I'm going to wrap this video at this point, uh, as I said, uh, and then in the next video I'm going to move on to the uh, to the second and final stages of the um, of the amplifier, and uh, we'll do some measurements and see what we see. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll hopefully get that uh, the next video out in a few days. Catch you later.